This video is about the B-17 nicknamed Poon Tank, also known as Escape Kit. Serial number 425860. Unfortunately, no good photos of this B-17 could be found. So, I will show you random pictures of B-17s in this video. Escape Kit was assigned to the 418th Bomb Squadron, 100th Bomb Group at Swap Abbots on June 2nd, 1943. This B-17 was part of the Regensburg Strike Force on August 17, 1943 to bomb the Metterschmidt Aircraft Factory in Regensburg, Germany, one of 146 B-17 flying fortresses. 21 B-17s of the 100th Bomb Group took part in this mission. Nine of them went lost and did not land it in the airfield in North Africa. Escape Kit was piloted by First Lieutenant Curtis R. Bittig and his crew on that fateful day. The group came under heavy enemy aircraft attack and Escape Kit was shut up by enemy fighters at about 10 o'clock near Frankfurt before they have reached Regensburg. The navigator, 2nd Lieutenant John C. Dennis, says in his questionnaire in Missing Air Group Report number 675. Ship afire by burst of 20 mm on right front side of fuselage. Oxygen and hydraulic supply ignited by hit and engineer wounded. Attempts made by nose occupants to extinguish blaze. No success. Interphone out. Alarm bell rung shortly after hit. Ship exploded before crashing. Second Lieutenant Dennis bailed out and was captured. Same as five other crewmen of Escape Kit. Four were killed. The radio operator, Technical Sergeant Robert R. Decay. The engineer and top turret gunner, Technical Sergeant Lawrence E. Godbay. The co-pilot, Flight Officer Richard L. Snyder. And the pilot, First Lieutenant Curtis R. Bittig. The Technical Sergeant Robert Decay was last seen by Clarence Bowling, the waste gunner. And Technical Sergeant Decay was crawling to the tail to get out. Sergeant Bowling's questionnaire in Missing Air Crew Report 675 reads as follows. I believe he bailed out. I was the last man to leave the ship from the waste. Before leaving, I looked in the tail and did not see him. He went back to the tail because the waste door would not release. It is believed that his chute failed to open. The engineer and top turret gunner, Technical Sergeant Lawrence E. Godby, was hit at the beginning of the enemy fighter attack. His guns had stopped firing then. It is believed that he was wounded or killed during the attack. The enemy attack set the pilot's compartment afire. Co-pilot Flight Officer Richard L. Snyder managed to bail out from his window. Two eyewitnesses saw this action. Flight Officer Owen D. Rowan's observation. Co-pilot stepped out on flaming right wing, fire in cockpit. Reached back for his parachute, stepped back on wing, and jumped. Conflicting opinion as to whether chute opens or not. And Bernard A. DeMarco's observation reads as follows. Time, 10.30 hours, at 50 degrees 20 minutes north, 6 degrees and 50 minutes east. Snyder seen to abandon ship, chute opened, plane peeled off to right, going down in wide circle. Plane was not seen to crash or land. The pilot, First Lieutenant Curtis R. Biddick, was last seen in the cockpit. His exit was blocked by the fire and said in attempting to negotiate the compartment window as did the co-pilot, that he was caused in the explosion and went down with the aircraft. It is also believed that he was holding the plane steady, caused by the fire in the cockpit, and went down with the ship. The navigator, 2nd Lieutenant John C. Dennis' account reads as follows. The occupants of the nose, that is the bombardier and I, were shut off by the oxygen blaze from the others of the crew. The interphone was inoperative after the hit. Except for the co-pilot, we have no actual knowledge of the fate of the deceased members of the crew. All information offered is second-hand. We were both afire shortly after the hit, making observation of secondary importance. I assume that the fire was intense, directly to the rear of the pilot and the co-pilot, forcing the latter out of the window and trapping the pilot because of his size. It may be that the pilot was burned in making his way back to bail out. The bombardier and I saw what we believed to have been a foot above us in the hatch, 
but since we were ablaze and making an exit through the fire in the hatch, it was but a fleeting and unrealistic observation. These were the summary of statements in Missing Air Crew Report 675. Escape kit crashed near Schweinberg, Germany, 80 km southeast of Frankfurt, 200 km northwest of Regensburg. I hope it was an interesting video about the B-17 and its crew for you. Please like, share and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching.